we're ready to go. Uh, welcome to uh, a webinar with Pathogen3 uh, Solutions here. And uh, we've had a, an, an interesting um, webinar a month or so ago that's posted on YouTube. But Charlie and Robin uh, have uh, updated information in this fast moving disinfection uh, industry. And particularly uh, important is the foot sanitizers. We're, we're finding that uh, there are all sorts of uh, evidence now that uh, the feet are creating uh, a transmission source for the virus. So we're gonna be very interested to hear Charlie and, and Robin. And uh, with that, I'll turn the, the mic over here to Charlie and Robin and uh, let them proceed. Thank you, uh, Robert. I really appreciate it, Bob. Um, my name is Charlie Rodriguez. I'm the sales director for Path uh, Pathogen Solutions. Um, I uh, oversee uh, clean room spaces, uh, pharmacy spaces, as well as healthcare. Um, I'm uh, joined by uh, the vice president of sales, Robin Collins, and I'll let Robin introduce herself. Oh, good morning, um, Bob. Thank you, Charlie. Um, we really appreciate this opportunity to talk about our clean room technology. I've had the opportunity to work with the company for about a year and a half and um, was blessed to be introduced to the founder about six years ago and helped in the very early days with some go-to-market strategy. So thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Robin, and thank you, Bob, for allowing us to do this and for inviting us to do this. Um, today we're going to talk about our uh, foot sanitation station. It's a very unique, um, uh, the only type of design that uh, sanitizes both the bottom of your, uh, your shoe using both ozone and uh, UV light. So I will uh, go ahead and start with the presentation today. Here you see a picture of our station. It's a very simple station. So if we were to, uh, if you were to order one or purchase one, uh, it, it comes in a box and it, and it comes uh, in a box with a, a rubber mat that has a little uh, kind of, a, I like to call it a little valley that you place the unit in and then you plug it into the wall. On the, the front side of the mat, uh, there's an up ramp, then you step on the plate um, on the unit and the lights come on for eight seconds, uh, wipes out the coronavirus in eight seconds, and it also uh, kills uh, a, nu a numerous amount of uh, deadly pathogens um, like C. diff, MRSA, E. coli, things like that. And once you do that, you step down and you go into a, a non-contaminated area. So that's a, a, a huge, huge uh, design difference from uh, other products that are similar to ours. So we like to say that you're stepping into a cleaner environment. Uh, our solution is scientifically proven solution. Um, it completely eliminated the coronavirus 2.2e and killed up to 99.999% of infection causing pathogens on shoes and seconds. In two independent studies that we've had, uh, one of the first places that we uh, tested our product was at Advent Health in Connerton here in Lutz area. It's close to where I, I live in Tampa, Florida. Um, it reduced their hospital associated infections by 34%. And what makes that number so significant, Bob, is that the 34% was during a um, construction time. So they had adverse conditions. And anybody that knows anything about uh, healthcare associated infections, that, that number typically goes up during construction. Um, construction companies are very concerned with that. Um, and, and so they have also become part of our market share. Um, so it, to reduce the uh, healthcare associated infections by 34% at, during adverse uh, conditions is really a significant number. Um, and, and the, you know, what makes our product so different and unique is that it's a patented technology that combines the powerful combination of ozone with UVC light. Uh, there's nothing like it in the world. As you can see there, you step on the unit, it lights up. You step on it for eight seconds and then you step off. Any questions, Bob? That uh, that seems to be a pretty simple uh, procedure there and uh, easy to follow. Yeah. Right. So as you know, the CDC has been putting out a lot of things. Um, in April 14th, uh, there was a study found in uh, from February 19th to March 2nd that 50% of ICU and 100% of pharmacy staff carried COVID-19 on the soles of their shoes. This was a CDC statement. 
Um, so I, I just want people to be wary uh, that uh, shoes uh, do carry deadly pathogens. Here's a picture of a facility that looks, uh, what, what it would look like prior to putting in our foot sanitation station. As you can see, there's a, a potential mi microbial load dispersion of pathogens over time. And this is what it looks like after putting in our foot sanitation station. What, what we like to do is we actually like to get um, the facility, the outline of the facility or the square footage, uh, you know, the entrances, things like that. And then you have to strategically place our units throughout the facility. And that's how it helps, you know, get rid of the microbial load uh, and pathogens over time. So what are some of the locations that I specifically focus on? Um, I specifically specifically focus on food processing, clean rooms, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, change room. Our company in itself uh, focuses on, on uh, everything from hotels uh, to healthcare, dentists. Um, so we're all, we're, you know, we, we focus on anybody that is looking to reduce microbial loads, especially in the pharmaceutical and the clean room space is what my focus is. Uh, so um, any questions on this? Uh, the one question I had, and you may be getting into this, is that it seems to me in the clean rooms, there's a, a big need for this, even where you do have the, uh, you know, class one to class 100 clean rooms where you're, you're going to be in changing room and, and, and wearing booties and things in, in the actual space. But the changing room itself can be um, a, a source of problems. So if you have the foot sanitizer you know, outside the changing room, uh, you go into it and uh, uh, eliminate some of the contamination that you might otherwise uh, uh, occur. And of course, putting on the uh, the uh, booties and going into the room doesn't help if uh, while you're in that changing room, some of the uh, virus gets on the clothing and et, et cetera. So uh, is that one thing you're envisioning with these higher class clean rooms? Uh, you have a, it's really a multiple stage. You've got the your your uh, uh, regular shoes that you sanitize with this before you go into the changing room. Yeah, so it, it just it, it, for for if that occasion, you know, it just depends. Um, I would suggest for the larger spaces that have these big cleaning rooms or changing rooms. I'm sorry, um, that you would put it prior to entering into the changing room, and then prior to entering into the lab space as well. So that way you're getting two, you're getting hit twice with it. So you're not bringing them into the changing room and, and, and having that opportunity for uh, those, you know, that de deadly viruses or, or deadly pathogens to get into the changing room. And then, you know, for a fact, once you're getting into the actual clean room space itself, the lab space that you're killing those deadly vi viruses as well. So uh, you can do one of two, you can do one before you go inside inside the lab or or no or you know one at the changing room area and one before the lab too so it just depends on the actual space itself yeah and i i think that some of the uh, studies in china show that the chaining changing rooms uh uh have higher viral viral counts than even some of the isolation rooms and they, that was attributed to the shedding of of particles from uh, various different sources uh, as they change clothes. So uh, it, it uh, I, I guess what I'm trying to emphasize to people is just because you're going to be putting booties on and going into the main clean room doesn't mean the foot sanitizer isn't still necessary. Right. And, and not only that, but, you know, with booties, there's there's a lot of things, you know, human error. Um, uh, there, there could be, you know, and you can use our foot sanitation station with the booties in conjunction with. So um, having both is, it's, it, you know, I, that, I recommend that if you're going to put the booties on. I don't recommend just going in with just shoes itself. But if, if your standard procedure is to go in with, you know, put booties on and then walk into the clean room, um, you know, they're susceptible to human error. They're susceptible to... Um, you know, you let's say your hands are contaminated and you put them on. Um, so there, there's lots of different reasons, but there's I recommend that you wear the booties and then you're able to step on a machine wearing the, the shoe covers. It does not damage that. It actually helps. Good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Robin, do you want to go ahead and do this one? I'm um, sure. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, this was a study that was performed at the Cleveland Veterans Administration. Um, it was published in Infection Control and Hospital Epidemiology in 2016. The primary authors were Drs. Koganti and Donsky. Donsky is a world-renowned infectious disease physician. What they did was they put a non-pathogenic viral marker on the floor of 10 patients' rooms, and they monitored the spread of that marker over a three-day period. The staff were blinded, so they weren't aware the study was going on. And what they found was within 24 hours, that marker had spread from the floor to 100% of the patient's footwear. It had virtually spread all over the room, including on the patient's hands, on the call button, and 62% of the time on visitors' chairs. It was also found on the doorknobs in adjacent rooms, the nurses' stations, and portable equipment. And it persisted for the duration of the study, the full three days, and is a highly statistically significant trial. So what right. this tells us is what's on, what's on floors and what's on shoes matter, and the pathogens can spread quickly and persistently. Thank you, Robin. So I'd like to get to the, the meat and potatoes of this. We had a study that was conducted March 20th of this year, um, the assessment of pathogen solutions footwear sanitation station for decontaminating hard, non-porous environmental surfaces. So basically it was a study on, on shoes and it was performed by Kremco Labs, an independent lab in Ontario, Canada. In a summary, it, it tested the effectiveness of the top technology at six, eight, and 10 second intervals. Um, and what we found, or what they found, is the results uh, speak for themselves. At eight seconds, there are zero uh, platforming units remaining on the, the soles of your shoes, as well as 10. So the concluding statement with our uh, device is that our footwear sanitation station completely eliminates the coronavirus 22E, which is the EPA recommended surrogate standard for testing the efficacy of our products used to combat COVID-19 in eight seconds. So what we're saying is that if you step on our product, um, we're gonna wipe out the coronavirus in eight seconds. Um, it, and what makes our product so unique and so special is the fact that we do use ozone. Everybody's seen the picture of the coronavirus. Everybody's seen that it has that outer shell, those spikes that's protecting it. Well, our ozone is is, is the difference maker. That's the, that's the game changer is that the ozone is able to crack that shell, which I will uh, kind of show, I'll show you in a later slide. And it's able to uh, let the UV light in. Um, facts, we know that you know, footwear is able to spread uh, some of the, these pathogens uh, to different surfaces, uh, viruses, bacteria, fungi, that, that, that's all on the bottom of your shoe. Have you seen some of the places that we walk, well, you know that a lot of these uh, pathogens are, uh, are all over the place. We know that our product eliminates coronavirus and up to 99.999% of other deadly infection causing pathogens in two separate in independent uh, laboratory, laboratory studies that we have done. Um, what I like to say is that I'm not saying that uh, what companies are doing now or what clean room they're doing now is the wrong thing because obviously it's working for them. It's been working for, uh, for them for a long time. What I like to say is that you can use our product in conjunction to what you're currently doing as well. We don't want you to change protocols. We don't want you to change over uh, you know, what you're doing on a daily basis uh, in your labs. We want you to keep, you know, keep your status quo, but include our product in there and see how it changes the atmosphere and see how it changes the microbial loads of your atmosphere. So um, it, sticky pads are great. They're great for removing debris, um, but they, they obviously don't kill pathogens and they don't kill, uh, they don't wipe out the coronavirus. Um, shoe covers, again, another thing, they're, they're great. Uh, you, as you know, Bob, they were in short supply during the peak of this coronavirus. Um, they're subject to human hair. Um, and another thing that's great about them is that you can use them with our foot sanitation station. So um, if you're using UV robots, they're effective, um, but they have a, they're limited abil uh, they're limited availability and time intensive. So you know what that means? They have to sit there longer. Um, and they require a lot of staff time um, to move them, to place them, to plug them in, move them, place them, put them somewhere else. Um, ours, you place down, you put it in there, 
and you're good to go. All you have to do is step on it for eight seconds, and then you walk in into your uh, clean environment. Yeah, Any questions? Of, yeah, a lot of uh, people are, you know, hearing about UV and UV robots and things like that, but it, uh, you know, you're actually stepping on the, uh, you know, on on the UV and ozone there, so you're inches away from it. So, as you say, the intensity of it. Uh, it's got to be orders of magnitude higher than you're getting with a UV robot, you know, in addition to the ozone. So uh, it's uh, it would it would seem that that's a big factor uh, is, is that intensity. Right. And, and you know what? It, it, like I said, we are not saying that what you're doing is wrong because I would never say that. And, and what they're doing is right because it's obviously working in their environment. Um, we're 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 saying that in conjunction with what you're doing to decrease your microbial loads, it might be a good idea to put our foot sanitation station in. Um, obviously, UV ro robots are, are, you know, they they work. Uh, they, they're, they're used all over the place. Shoe covers work. Um, but are you getting the results that you want? You know, or, so. All right. So Advent Health, we did a case study in Advent Health in Conanton, Florida. They were the first uh, hospital healthcare space to implement our technology back in February of 2019. Uh, they are a specialty acute care hospital, which aims to maximize infection control. So they're specific at make, make, make sure that they're controlling their infections. Uh, nine stations currently right now are being used throughout the facility. Like I said earlier, infection rates drop during construction, or so during adverse conditions from February through August of 2019. What's important that I like to mention in, uh, as well is that not only do, are these effective in making sure that these deadly viruses are not um, coming into whatever facility you may have, whether it be a clean room space, healthcare, anything like that. What makes what makes this very interesting is that 92% of the employees at Advent Health were completely satisfied, or highly, or 82% were highly satisfied. Um, so, out of the you know how let's say 100 employees, there's 92 employees that were satisfied, um, and less than 2% dissatisfied. Um, that's a big thing. You have to get employee buy-in to make sure that this product actually works effectively at, what, at whatever facility you're using them at. Because the last thing you want is for someone to not step on this device and you're not getting the results that you expect by purchasing this device or testing it, whatever it is you're doing. Um, another big thing is that there's, no, no, there's been no slip or falls related to the uh, foot sanitation units in, in the year that, in the over a year that it's been there. And what I like the most about this is that and this is, may not be attributed to, um, you know, the foot sanitation station, but prior to uh, Conerton, uh, Advent Health Conerton placing our product into their uh, clean room space and pharmacy, um, their pharmacy and air surface uh, samples were actually positive. And then uh, when we put our uh, units in, they went negative for any pathogen growth. So I can't take, uh, I can't take um, uh, credit for the air, you know, but... We do think that uh, our, our unit did have something to do with that. And down below, you see Debbie Martosio. The, the stations out allow us to establish new protocols that proactively prevent infections to ensure the best possible outcomes for patients. Um, and that's what we're trying to start up here. You know, we consider our product more of a PPE. It's a 24-7 PPE. It's something that um, it's a visual for uh, employees. It's a visual for patients that this hospital, this facility, this this place, whatever whatever location they're at is doing everything they can to make sure that I'm safe and that the environment that I'm going into is safe. All right, so we talk about the clean room space. This is a quote directly from their uh, pharma, uh, director of pharmacy services after they added our product uh, to both our clean and anti rooms to help reduce the risk of pathogens con uh, contaminating our clean room. Uh, they updated protocols to require each employee who enters our clean room to use the sanitizing station. Since their implementation, their last air and surface samples were, were negative for any growth in our rooms. Uh, they look forward to continuing the use of our pathogen solutions footwear sanitation station to minimize risk for our patients and provide the safest care possible. So um, this is going to be included in Crothall's healthcare white paper, uh, uh, the five core disciplines to reduce HAIs and improve patient experiences. This should be coming out soon this summer. Um, this is a big quote for us. This is huge. Um, you've got a, a director of pharmacies that's saying that they're negative in their air, uh, last air and surface samples for any growth. 
Um, you know, and that's what everybody strives for when they're looking for a clean room space. They're looking for the cleanest, you know, the least microbial loads possible. So this would be a, placing the sanitizer in at the entrance to the pharmacy in a hospital as, as well as the general entrance. Is that uh, is that correct? I'm sorry. Uh, can you repeat? Yeah. That? Uh, okay, yeah. So, so the the pharmacy services here. So, you would have a, a sanitizer in front of the at the entrance to the pharmacy itself, as well as to the entrance to the hospital. Yes, and then also at Advent Health Connerton, they have one in the ante room, uh -huh. right outside of the clean room. So they use it right before going into the clean room where they have a compounding pharmacy. Right, right, and. Uh, so you've got you know a, a heightened reason to put it in uh obviously with the pharmacy there because all sorts of different uh, contaminants could come in on those shoes yeah all right so uh, as you see below there's a, a little bit of media that we got from abc action news we've um ever since uh the pandemic actually started we've received a lot of media uh we placed units at the new york hotel in uh, new york uh, to help with the healthcare staff that were coming in from out of town and volunteering. Um, there's videos there about that. We also placed it at a um, at the second hardest hit county in, uh, in New Jersey, at Bergen County. We, we placed uh, a unit there, currently um, helping in their uh, sheriff's office, people that are frontline workers. Um, we placed them in different hospitals where they decreased C. diff rates by 78% and completely wiped out their MRSA after they've been experiences, experiencing 11 to 12 healthcare infections, associated infections per month. So it, it's, it, it's really helped in the different types of facilities throughout the country and in different, you know, from, from the you know, police force, law enforcement to hotels, restaurants, we've placed them in restaurants here in the Tampa Bay area. Um, so it's, it's, it's helping uh, people really uh, prevent these infections from getting spread around. Um, you want to explain this, Robin? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Norton Audubon uh, Hospital in the Norton Healthcare System in Louisville, Kentucky, um, evaluated the technology last fall, and they placed the units in the entrances and in the corridors leading to where immunocompromised patients were being treated. And as a result of their success um, in reducing HAIs in particular, MRSA and C. difficile, they opted in January to go to all four of their main hospitals and they acquired 25 total units. Um, their uh, leapfrog scores, which came out this spring, were A's for all four of those hospitals. You'll notice how that these hospitals compared to the other hospitals in Louisville. Uh, Clark Memorial Hospital is jointly owned by Norton Healthcare and LifePoint Health. They did not acquire the units, but they are working to get a unit or two at this time. Yeah, so you can see there's a big difference there, Bob, that the, the hospitals that carry multiple units um, all received A scores from LeapFrog, um, and the one unit in their system that did not have any, uh, the one, one hospital in their system that did not receive any units or still have not received any units is the Norton Healthcare and LifePoint Health, the Clark Memorial Hospital. So there's a, there's a significant difference there. Um, so uh, four, the only four hospitals in, in Kentucky that did receive A's. Uh, and we're not attributing this completely to that, but um, we're thinking, you know, this has a big role in it. Yep, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. And we look at it as just another layer of infection prevention. Right. And, uh, this was a study performed by the University of South Florida at a Tampa Bay hospital. And um, what they found was more than 75% of the shoes that walked into the hospital were contaminated with MRSA, C. difficile, and other pathogens. And that on the average, more than 4 million pathogen units were carried into the hospital each and every day on the soles of shoes. Pretty scary stuff. Yeah, that is a big number. Sorry, I'll go back. So as I was talking earlier a little bit about
coronavirus and how it has the outer shell. Here's a, a good illustration of how the ozone and UVC is completely different from just UVC alone. Uh, as you know, ozone, uh, well, as you can tell here in the pictures, ozone wants to uh, sell the outer capsid, as we like to call it, um, enters uh, or hits the, the outer shell of, of uh, the pathogen. It, it creates a hole. So you can see right here, there's a little bitty hole which it forms. And at that point, um, it, it allows the UV light to get in. And once the UV light it, it gets in, it begins to lose its shape. And within a few seconds, the cell dies. So uh, we know that the UVC plus ozone denatures it at the DNA level. And in seconds, it's able to kill 99.9% .9 of the deadliest superbugs. Um, there's a big difference between floor disinfectants, between UVC alone, and between ozone and UVC. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the CDC cites a few hours after floor disinfectant, the bacteria count was nearly back to pre-treatment levels. So when you're just cleaning the floors themselves, yeah, they work well. Um, but do you want your staff cleaning it, um, you know, throughout the day, every hour or every two hours? Um, that's that that would be nearly impossible to keep a hospital floor clean like that. Um, or, a, or a clean room space like that. So you can see here floor disinfectants before, uh, floor disinfector, uh, disinfectants after, and then in two hours, like I said, they're able to uh, come back to pre-treatment levels. Uh, UVC alone, yes, it does uh, alter in, uh, the DNA, but the pathogens may uh, uh, regenerate afterwards. You can see here after two hours that they, they're able to regenerate um, to pre-treatment levels as well. Our difference, is that we limit that regeneration because we denature it at the DNA level. Um, we're able to uh, crack that outer shell and get that UVC light in there in a very quick, uh, quick time frame, and that limits the regeneration because there's not as many, uh, uh, you know, platforming units there. Any questions on this, Bob? No, it seems pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, obviously effective to have the two uh, forces working together. Right. So there's some other products out there that state, you know, we kill 99% of, uh, of the forming units, the, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 or 99% where with log reduction rates, as you can tell here, when it comes to log reduction rates, we have uh, our unit kills at 99.999%. Um, uh, so it's a log reduction rate of five of, you know, ours is between four and five. Uh, typically at the five level. So that's a huge difference as the, the four units that are remaining on the bottom of the soldier's shoe. Uh, the NSF lab study, uh, they tested our technology back in 2019. They selected some of these super bugs that were added to the bottom of their shoes, E. coli, MRSA, CRE, VRE, uh, Candida, Aurorus, uh, C. diff. And as you can see here, there's a different log reductions in, in our different uh, uh, intervals. So you got the six, uh, eight, and ten. Obviously, the ten uh, second intervals kills them a lot, uh, a, a lot more. Uh, and there are different log rates for those. And then eight is a little lower. Some are the same, like VRE. Um, and uh, and then you got the six one. We typically put our station at eight. Um, that is typically the uh, the average time that we we put our uh, stations on. Robin, you want to explain this? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, this is a table which shows at eight seconds the effectiveness of ultraviolet C alone as compared to what our technology offers, the powerful combination of ozone and UVC. And what you'll see is that for something like Staph aureus or MRSA, the results were really quite similar in terms of effectiveness. But with the vast majority of the other pathogens, what you'll notice is this isn't the case. Um, in particular, uh, C. difficile. Uh, the issue with C. difficile, as many know, is they have spores. And uh, UVC alone does not do a good job at penetrating the spore cell wall. But because our technology with the ozone cracks the capsid, we are considerably more effective. 
Um, UVC alone at eight seconds is only about 85% effective, which means almost 150,000 pathogen units are left behind. As compared to with our technology, 99.944% effective or 3.25 log reduction and only 562 pathogens left behind. So you could say that our technology by having the ozone is 263 times more effective in killing C. diff. You can also see that um, with virtually all the other pathogens listed here, we're considerably more effective, including VRE, E. coli, um, especially so with Pseudomonas, and then as well with the human coronavirus. And although they have a 99.499% reduction, that still means um, over 5,000 PFUs remain as compared to with our technology, only 204, which means that we are approximately 24.5 times more effective than UVC alone at eight seconds. Yeah, those are some impressive uh, figures and obviously very um, apropos for hospitals and nursing care facilities. But uh, you know these are the the sorts of contamination that uh, all sorts of different facilities would be better off not to have. So it seems uh, uh, it, just in general here the combination of the coronavirus plus all these other uh, my, microbial um, diseases uh, in combination justifies the the cost uh, many times over. Thanks, Bob. We agree. So here's a picture of our station up close and personal. Um, as you can see here, it's, there's a, a little ready light that you uh, that's lit prior to you stepping on it. As soon as you step on it, and, and for women, this is very important. I've been asked this question many, many, many times. Do heels break the glass? No, heels do not break the glass. Women can stand on it. Um, as long as I, I just ask women not to jump up and down on it. But uh, you can wear heels. Um, it's, it's a size. It starts with a size, a woman's size five up to a, a men's size 13, 14, I believe it was. Um, so it's a very big footprint. Uh, you step on the, the thing, uh, on the foot sanitation device. And as soon as you step on it, the lights, boom, they light up. Uh, you're getting ozone hitting the bottom of your shoe. It says weight. There's a little weight. You can barely see it, but it's right here in the underneath the G. Uh, it says wait, wait. So you wait. You know, it it has an internal counter. Um, you, the springs go off. The lights come on. Um, the ozone's hitting the bottom of your shoes, cracking all of the, all of those shells and letting that UV light go in. There's six bulbs in here, so there's three on each foot, and then you step off. Uh, here's a good picture of what our units look like at the entrance of any hospital or healthcare uh, institution. Um, we place we like to be, uh, place our units strategically. Um, and, and what's good about our units is that you can get the community involved. This is this, you know, it, it, this doesn't have to be just for the employees of uh, the clean room spaces. Uh, you can get the entire community involved with our unit. Um, you, you can put, place them at the uh, front of hospitals, at the front of any kind of healthcare center. Uh, again, we place them at hotels, restaurants. Um, and, and, and what we what we recommend is these you want these units securing your perimeter. Um, you, they're visual signs of safety and security for the for the people that are coming in. So, what I like to ask, uh, our, you know, potential customers is, what's it cost for you? What's the cost for you to get your pre-COVID um, numbers back? How many, uh, you know, customers do you need? How many patients do you need? How many of those elective surgeries do you need in order to get back? Uh, to what were pre-COVID numbers to reach your uh, bottom line to to uh, to break to get your break-even point to be profitable. So that's what I like to ask people uh, when they when we talk about um, placing some of these units is what what can we do to help you get back to pre-COVID numbers? So we fit in your facility. The placement of our sanitation stations can be customized based on your facility, any facility. Uh, they, we can customize them to be freestanding, um, or we can cut, we can put them into your floors. Uh, depends on what you like. Uh, we put mountable information signage that accompanies each pathogen unit 
each pathogen FSS unit, which is a foot sanitation unit. So there's signs. There's signs that we can place so people, when they walk in your facility, they, they look at this thing on the floor and they're like, what is this? So they can look at the sign and say, hey, you know, step here for eight seconds. Oh, okay, this is great. And then you've got the hand sanitizers there as well um, uh, and whatever, whatever um, you know, safety precautions you're taking to allowing people into your uh, facilities. So what's, what's our value proposition? Uh, what, we, what we like to say is that protects your workers and end users. You know, that's the most important thing. It's protecting your healthcare workers, it's protecting your people, um, because without them, you're not profitable. You're not making any money. You're not, you're not, you know, helping patients. Uh, if if your you know your doctors and nurses and uh, your lab techs are getting sick, it's a scientific, scientifically proven uh, technology. We know that it reduces the risk of uh, path, uh, passing any of these deadly pathogens on. Um, and it, and it, it, it uh, increases employee satisfaction because now employees are saying, okay, XYZ company is doing this for us and they're, they're making me feel safe to come to work every single day. Um, another thing that I find very useful is that they're easy to use. There is no um, mounting them. There is no building. There is no, uh, there's no instructions uh, to, uh, you have to place this part here and place this part here. No, you pull them out of the box, you place them in the mat, and then you plug them in, and they're ready to go. Um, it, everybody knows that Bob, our last uh, one of our webinars that we did with you, uh, which was very significant, and I learned a lot in my last webinar with you, is that it, it offers a significant return on investment. If we can help any healthcare institution, any lab, any uh, hospital um, in decrease their healthcare associated infections by one, two, three, five, whatever the number may be, um, it's gonna, it, right there and then, it offers a huge return on investment. Because as you know, um, and on our end, we're stating that hospital associated infections cost anywhere between twenty-two to $25,000 per infection. So, um, you know, Reducing it by one, you've already paid for your product. Um, and, and then the, the webinar that we had before, you know, you, you talked about the human costs, um, the human cost of what these infections can, can cost a hospital and uh, where, you know, the, the, the loss of job, the, the family, uh, the traveling, uh, you know, the, the care afterwards, um, you know, the legal fees. There's a lot that this can help prevent. Um, so, and that's it, you know. I realistically, that 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 is everything that I have. We do have a little bit more data we have uh, that we we could present, but I don't want to keep you here all day, um, Bob. I can I can continue to talk on and on and on and on about this, but uh, do you have any <laughs> questions? <laughs> yeah, no. I, I think that uh, one one point I'd like to make is that the economics are are much bigger than the twenty five thousand, uh, and you say average for the health. Uh, uh, hospital uh, acquired infections uh, for a number of different reasons. One, uh, a significant number of the COVID cases end up in, in death. Uh, and therefore, uh, even, EP, you know, EPA is talking about $10 million uh, as the assigned cost of each death uh, in terms of their value propositions. But uh, there's usually 10, 10 people uh, who are infected for every person who dies. And then with all the time lost with, with COVID, you've got, uh, well, what for, for instance, what could be a couple of weeks in the IU and those costs come up to huge, huge numbers. We've done some calculations of what that costs, but the, the total cost per COVID case ends up somewhere around $58 million uh, when you take into account uh, not only the, the, the one, one death, but the 10 or 15 people who are uh, immobilized and then all the family members who have to care for them and one thing or another. So, you know, the, um, the return on investment uh, has to be huge. Uh, the one other point I wanted to make uh, too is how convenient this is for uh, a lot of the efforts that, that the stores and apartment building, not apartment building, but stores and others are making. Uh, they have temperature checks at the, uh, and so they have people all lining up anyway, uh, whether it's a, you know, a airline or whatever, sticking, uh, sticking uh, the sanitizer before the temperature checker along with it would be a very convenient uh, uh, place to do so, right? 
Absolutely. We totally yeah. agree. Yeah, we agree that, you know, anywhere that people are lining up to either uh, get, like you said, temperature checked or metal detectors or, you know, like ports, um, the airline industry, um, you know, the, the theme parks, um, people don't realize how, how if you see what the, the, the number of cases that that happened um, when this first started breaking out, a lot of it was in those industries. A lot of the, the people that were infected were in those industries, you know, in the, the ports, in the, the airline industry, in right. the, in the, where there's large gatherings and very close, tight spaces. Um, so, yes, this would offer significant return on investment if placed in those. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't significantly change the time that it takes to get through whatever entrance or, uh, you know, whether it be at the airport or at the ports or for theme parks, it, it doesn't change the time because you can place a number of units. It, not, it wouldn't be just one unit. It would be numbers, it would be multiple um, units. Um, I mean, everybody knows how long the safety checks are at the airport. I mean, what's an extra eight seconds, right? <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, um, everybody knows it takes an hour to get inside Disney before, after you park your car. Um, what's an extra eight seconds? Um, everybody knows how long it takes to get on a boat and when you go on a cruise, what's the next eight seconds? That's the way I look at it. The way I look at it, the way that people should look at it, it's, it is the eight seconds really going to be that significant to where you would rather have an outbreak at your facility in any type of facility, whether it be food processing, labs, uh, clean rooms, regular office space, the airlines, that at you would risk the potential of losing a lot more customers by having another big outbreak versus trying to do what you can to protect them and get making them stand on a product for eight seconds that we know scientifically proven to wipe out the coronavirus in eight seconds. So that's my question to, to folks is uh, what's, what's, it, what's the cost to you if, if the eight seconds is too too much or it, the cost of the unit is too much um, to lose a significant, it wouldn't be just a little bit, it would be a significant amount of business if this were to hit you hard again. Oh, that's a very, very good point. And along that same line, the upscale apartment buildings are going all out, uh, you know, HEPA filters in the elevators and things. So having the foot sanitizer in front of the elevator in an upscale apartment building would seem to be you know, a minor cost and a big benefit uh, uh, in, in terms of just making the uh, residents feel safe. Correct. Yeah. Like, like, I, like I've stated before, there is a, um, you know, the, the marketplace for our unit is it's vast and many. Um, these can be used. The only place that I don't recommend usage of our units is for personal use in someone's home, unless you're leaving it outside at that point. You're uh, you're risking it getting wet, getting damaged by the weather. Obviously, you know it's a it's a it's a uh, you know it's a high technology product that's not set to sit outside um, because it has ozone. You need you need ventilation for it as well. So yeah. Well, so I really appreciate your time, Bob. Um, you know, do you have any other questions that or or any statements that you'd like to make? No, I I think that um, uh, we're certainly. Um, thought this was very informative uh, and obviously a lot of progress uh, being made here and we'll be posting this and look forward to having you participate in uh, in a number of our other webinars so I'd like to thank both Charlie and Robin for a very interesting presentation today